guys, I've started a new job. And on that job, I've been getting up to speed with Kubernetes. So let me just quickly show what I've learned in a little open source project I have on my GitHub repo. I suggest you install Kubernetes via Minikube on your local machine, because doing it on GCP just seems to take forever. But at the moment, it seems to be taking forever here. OK, it's up. There's a whole bunch of commands you need to learn. There's a, there's a kubectl cheat cheat that you have to get up speed with, but like, oh. Oh, this just shows you what it runs just by default. These, all these cube systems, I mean, oh, I, I don't know where to begin, but let, let's just run through this demo. So I have this little project called SLA, and Kubernetes, for those who don't know, it's like, container orchestration. But the weird thing is, I find, is that these sort of YAML files, these like declare, it's like HTML, declare how the containers run. They don't seem to be part of upstream packages for the most part. You have to sort of hunt them down or make them up yourself. Or worse, use something like Helm charts. It's like this crazy um, sort of pre-packaged uh, uh, thing for generating this YAML, which is just usually obtuse in my opinion. But, but let's just keep it simple. I found this one that basically gets Prometheus running in there with a bonus, uh, which I'll show later. So uh, apply that. So um, get, that's what my current contest is, really cute. This is a nice tool called K9S that sort of helps me keep track of things. So I've got Prometheus running and I'm gonna get my little uh, test application running. Um, let me just run one of them. And you can see it's just running one. So it's, you basically tell Kubernetes in these YAML files what you want, like say I want 10, and then you apply it, and then Kubernetes does its best to make it, make it run. And um, I'm also set up a load balancer here so that I have like one entry point that reaches these, like, if I apply this, it's going to be 10. So I have like one entry point that's spread amongst these 10 um, little services. And what my little service does is quite simple. It basically, um, it's, it's just a very simple instrumented uh, handler, which exports how long it took to handle that request. Interestingly, as you'll, as you'll find in this, um, instrumentation, it, there's a couple of ways to instrument. I'm using this sort of histogram approach where I'm basically capturing in buckets what where the requests are. It's a little bit complicated, but just, just bear with me. Bear with me. So uh, I got Prometheus running. Let me just show you that. So now I have access to Prometheus. But the cool thing is this that default YAML I gave before is automatically discovered all these little services from this SLA test program that I have. So let's do a query on, let's do some load testing. So if I run hey, so but by default it runs um, 200 requests and it's very fast. So let's start um plotting this and the thing that i like to use is http requests yeah 200. sorry this this query box is just ruining my life so this is basically showing you, me that it's got 200 requests so the thing that i'm trying to do actually is to prove to in my new job that like a certain service instrumented service just like sla has got like a particular SLO. Like it serves 95% of the requests within 300 milliseconds. How do you do that? With a query like this. So what you do here is you, you sum it up and you divide by the total. So every every time I've run a hay, which has been a couple of times now, it's always below 300 milliseconds. So 100% is within the um, 300 millisecond SLA or SLO, sorry. Now let's let's pretend that I, I run here again, and I've made it such that I can sleep my um, my little application by 300 milliseconds. 
So this will make sure that it takes longer. Let's make it like three, let's make it 301 just to make sure. So I've run hay a couple of times now. I'm not sure if it's in the right. So I'm guessing it's gonna be about 50% now because 50% was outside of the thing and 50% was in. Sorry, I didn't uh, put in the thing properly. Okay, now it's been, as you can see, it's been, the requests have been over 300 milliseconds. So now it's gonna be like 66%, just as what you suspect. So in order to meet the SLO of uh, say 95%, you, you, you alert if that value goes below 0 0.95. Pretty easy, hey? Please look at my source code, please like the video, and uh, please drop some Kubernetes tips if you have any. Um, and uh, thanks for watching guys, bye now.